Good morning all. Today I'm going to use this MPR121 12 input capacitive touch sensor module to make a crude musical instrument. Now the first issue as you can see here is that this is a 3.3 volt chip and it doesn't have 5 volt tolerant uh, data lines and I want to use a 5 volt uh, Arduino, Arduino Uno, a clone one because it has these nice handy male header pins. So the plan is to use this little level converter as an intermediary between the 5 volt Arduino and the 3.3 volt capacitive touch sensor chip. Now as luck would have it there's quite a good correlation between pins on the touch, sen touch sensor module and the level converter. I'll flip these over and you'll see what I mean. I've managed to work out that the B side is the 3.3 volt side, A is the 5 volt side. Um, I had to refer to data sheets um, for the transistors and trace the tracks through to do that, but uh, that's how it is. Now VCC goes up to the 3.3 volt pin which is at the top here. Ground will go down to the ground pin down the bottom here. And then clock happens to line up with clock, and data happens to line up with data. And so as I don't have a mess of wires, I'm going to actually hardwire this across with wire links. So let's do that straight away. So that's the uh, touch sensor module hardwired to the level converter with little wire links. And I've put DuPont pins onto the A side because that's going to connect to the Arduino. Not sure what I'm doing with the sensors yet, so I've left them disconnected. Now the other two lines that I have to worry about are address, which sets the address, uh, the I2C address of the chip, depending on whether you connect it to ground, VCC, SCL or SDA, so I'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, and also IRQ, which needs to be wired back to the Arduino, but we don't really need a level converter for this pin because it's open collector. So data sheet for the MPR121. This is a freescale semiconductor chip. It is 3.3 uh, volts, but I'm interested in the uh, IRQ pin and also the address pin. So here we are. IRQ is open collector interrupt output pin active low and address is the I2C address select input pin connect the address pin to either VSS, VDD, SDA or SCL. The resulting I2C address will be 5A, 5B, 5C or 5D respectively. Well let's go for the first one 5A which means connecting address pin to VSS which is ground. Now since I'm going to use Adafruit uh, library to drive this thing I thought I'd check what uh, Lady Ada did on her version of the MPR121 touch sensor. And you can see here that their version uh, has the chip, the 3.3 volt regulator, and the two transistors of the level converter on the one board. So in common with what I've done, attaching the level converter to this module, which I got from Alice, I've kind of ended up with the same as uh, Limor Freed designed on her single board. So kind of working with the same thing here. So let's see what she's done with the address pin and with the IRQ pin. Well, here we are. Address is the I2C address. By default, this is pulled down to ground with a 100K resistor. I don't remember that in the data sheet, but I'll have another look. For an I2C address of uh, hexadecimal 5A, IRQ is the interrupt request signal pin. It is pulled up to 3.3 volts. Well, that's odd. I would have pulled that up to... 5 volts, but uh, 3.3 certainly might work, or well, should work, <laughs> it almost certainly does because Lady Ada's done that uh, on the breakout and when the sensor chip detects a, three, uh, a change in the touch sense, which is the pin goes to 0 volts, in other words it pulls down to ground, this is the open collector output and then data is read over I squared C. OK. Well, the data sheet has the address line uh, pulled or wired directly to VSS. In other words, wired directly to ground. There's no 100K resistor there. So I probably won't bother with that. Uh, the IRQ line is, of course, pulled up because it's open collector. So we'll put in a suitable value resistor for that. But Adafruit have done something quite neat 
on the IRQ line. Let's have a look at that. Now, I think I've worked out why Limor put the 100k resistor between address and ground now. She's done that actually on the board, and that means that you can connect it directly to the other three pins, and the 100k resistor won't have much impact for changing that address. So perhaps I will go with the 100k resistor there so that there is an option to change the I squared C address. Now, what about IRQ? Well, it's a small drawing, but you might just be able to see that IRQ is pulled up through a resistor, but also an LED. Now, I find that quite interesting. She's pulled it up to 3.3 volts. I would have been tempted to pull that up to 5 since I'm using a 5 volt Arduino. But you might think that uh, with an LED in there, this point here would be lower than 3.3 volts by the forward voltage of the LED. But of course, when this is pulling up, there's no current flowing through this circuit at all. So it's possible that the forward voltage of the LED is actually zero when there's no current flowing. This obviously works, um, but it's intriguing. I think I'll give this a try. So there's my red LED uh, with a 1K pull up to 3.3 volts. I needed a DuPont pin on the IRQ output. So I've put the LED to IRQ via one of these VIAs. I think the solder joint has made a reasonable connection. Uh, and then I noticed that um, these lines have these cuttable and relinkable pads. So address is already linked to ground. So I haven't had to bother to do anything with that. And I've had to cut the IRQ one because that went up to through that via there to one of these three 10K surface mount resistors. So I've cut that so it now is pulled up through my LED circuit. Okay, I think that's all the wiring done. So here's Adafruit's library on GitHub. So I'm going to click the download zip to uh, install that in my Arduino IDE. So I'll just remove master from the end of that name. That should be the correct name now. Well, now that's interesting. The new uh, Arduino 1.6.2 version, which I downloaded yesterday under sketch, seems to have an include library add .zip library, which I've not seen before. So I should be able to install it from this zip folder here. Let's give that a try. Uh, well, that's quite good. It uh, works and it seems to strip out the word master as well because it's installed it as uh, Adafruit MPR121 library. Now there's an example here, MPR121 test. So I think I'm going to uh, open that one up and uh, see what that does. So this library creates CAP, which is the Adafruit MPR121 object. And then it uh, does a begin here with hexadecimal 5a, which is how I've linked the hardware. So that all looks good. Well, now, interestingly, uh, this sketch doesn't use the IRQ line. So I've not wired that up. And similarly, at this end, I've not wired IRQ, just VCC ground, SDA and SCL for the I squared C. The sketch is compiled and running and it does seem to be working. The LED, if I touch the touch sensor inputs, this red LED does come on, it's very dim. Um, and every time I do a touch or a release, the TX light on the Arduino is coming on. So it's transmitting now via uh, USB serial back to the serial monitor. So I need to look at the serial monitor on my uh, computer screen to see what's coming back from all these touch and release events. So here's the serial monitor. It's saying uh, Adafruit's MPR121 capacitive touch sensor test. The MPR121 has been found. Right, here's my MPR121 in real life. Let's start touching some of these pins. So it says number one has been touched and released. Uh, number four, five, and as I go higher, 10 and right at the top. Let's have number 11, can we please? Yeah, number 11, 10, 9, all touched and release. So it is reading the I squared C. It is getting the touch and release uh, data. I can't hold this very well by the wires. Let's see if I can work out a better system. So I'll touch these with a screwdriver now. That's uh, zero there. So zero touched and released, uh, two touched and released. Uh, what's this one there? Four, six, it's not picking up six for some reason, eight, 
and you can just about see the LED flickering and up there is pin 11 touched and released. Oh, they do seem to be working. Some of them seem to be working, others don't. Got eight, seven doesn't seem to do anything. Six, five works. That's very interesting. I wonder why those two aren't working. In fact, it just seems to be those two, seven and six. That's weird. Well, uh, seven and six didn't work. And if you look at the chip, just on that very, uh, the right hand side of that front edge, I'm trying to light it to um, see if I can highlight it. But it looks to me like there's a tiny little solder splash between two pins on the chip. So I'm just going to poke around at that with a knife because if they're linked together, then both of them are going to be effectively uh, inoperable. Well, I've been uh, poking around with this tiny needle between pins seven and six. Um, but you can see from this that the head of the needle is almost as big as the chip. So it's actually quite difficult to uh, get between those pins. And I haven't managed to fix it. You can see five is pulsing the LED, but six and seven aren't. So I may have a Duff module, eight is fine as well. Um, but I'm going to plow on and I'm going to insert a command in the sketch to try and make um, a little beep when these pins are touched. Let's try that. So the first thing I've done is put a little piezo sounder between ground and digital pin eight. And now I'm gonna try and use the Arduino tone command to produce a tone from this sounder each time I press one of the inputs. So here it is, uh, tone generates a square wave of the specified frequency at a 50% duty cycle on a pin. Uh, let's have a look. So we need to say tone, pin, frequency, and duration. Well, I'm using pin eight, so that's okay. I'll go for, I don't know, half a second. What's the duration in? Uh, that's in milliseconds, so we'll go for 500 milliseconds. Let's give that a try. So in the NPR121 sketch, I've added this line here, tone uh, eight, because I'm on digital pin eight, I times 100. Well, I is a variable that's here and is the pin that you touch. So it will multiply the pin number by 100 for the frequency, and then the duration will be 500 milliseconds. So it should do a beep for half a second. Let's compile and see how we go. So here it is. Now I've blue tacked the Pizzo speaker to the side of my phone, so I'm not sure how loud this is going to be, but let's try. Uh, and the high frequencies do sound better than the low ones, so let's start on pin 11. Now six and seven don't work. And zero produces a frequency of zero hertz, so that doesn't do anything. Beautiful music. Now I've not really made any attempt to use the frequencies that relate to musical notes. And yet actually at the low end of this thing, it sounds quite musical. So I'm almost certainly going to come back to this and uh, explore the relationship between frequency and the notes that make music. And uh, I'm going to build a keyboard out of coins and look what I found. Sensible Korean people already have holes in their coins. So I don't need to drill holes in uh, coins that have the queen's head on them. But for the moment, that's it. That's as far as I'm going to go with the uh, NPR. 1 to 1 12 input capacitive touch sensor. So cheerio.